we wanted to get married we want to have a family and uh, the law just wouldn't let us do that in india i can pursue a life i want in the us but i want to do it in my country There is a phrase in the academic literature called the gay brain drain and it's a type of migration which is not economic in nature but where the main moving force for you to migrate is your sexual orientation and these include people like me i did not move here to make my life monetarily better i'm not an economic migrant i had an amazing job an amazing support system in india but i've moved here just so that i could live a life of dignity when i grew up i always wanted to work with the indian administrative services this was my dream this was what i was interested in but when i was 20 i realized i was gay so i was kind of forced to reconsider my career choices how could i be possibly working with the indian government and be in direct conflict with the indian constitution section 377 was still very much in effect this was in 2015 pre navtej johar so yes today i am a machine learning engineer i really love what i do and i love my job but this wasn't my plan a i was forced to change my career choice because i am gay living in the us wasn't always a plan Um when I came out to California in 2014 I told everybody my my friends my family my employer my mentors my dog uh that I would be back in a year or so after my LLM uh that that didn't happen once once I got to Palo Alto um I saw there's a completely different world here you know in in India um in practicing law in New Delhi and New Delhi certainly is more more liberal than other parts of the country uh but I wasn't out at work uh my bosses certainly didn't know uh I lied about my sexuality my you know senior advocates that I worked with didn't know the judges certainly didn't uh I viewed my sexuality as a serious impediment to my career prospects you know at one point in time we made friends with this broker and we even tried telling the broker that listen just tell uh, just just tell the 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 landlords that that we're actually a couple that we're for all intents and purposes married uh and he just sort of looked at me and 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 just <laughs> never spoke of it ever again again we're getting old and we knew that there was no possibility of living a life of dignity in our own country when we've traveled together we have been there for each other um in our ups and downs we've given each other obnoxious nicknames which our friends completely hate but they can't get enough of um we fight at times like every other millennial married couple and i just hope that i don't have to you know leave my country to be able to be with the person i love i don't have to leave my support system my friends and family for something that is my basic fundamental right while lgbtq people undoubtedly bear the most and the highest burden when it comes to this exclusionary policy of not allowing equal rights uh it's important to recognize that this has repercussions for everyone 
for every citizen of India, for the country as a whole, for the economy as a whole. As an economist, I am aware of a vast body of literature that studies how denying people the same rights that are available to the general population can harm the country as a whole. The Supreme Court was pretty explicit when it said the LGBTQ community possesses the same human, fundamental and constitutional rights as other citizens. So the idea that the Constitution only gives the right to marry to heterosexuals and says homosexuals, tough luck, um, it's just inconsistent with precedent. The past year, I have seen so many of my best friends, so many of my peers get married and I want to get married just like them. I want to build a family and I want to be able to make medical decisions for my partner. I want to be able to list them as a beneficiary on my life insurance. Things that any other straight couple would do. Why should it be any difficult for me? You know, if I wanted to move somewhere else, that should have been 100% my decision. Um, it should not have been policies and social circumstances surrounding my sexuality that drive me out. You know, I'm super afraid. I can't tell you how, how much I miss being in India, how much I miss being at home. Um, after I moved here, my grandmother, my only remaining grandparent, uh, suddenly passed away. And for the last 15 years, the only thing she's said is the only last wish that she's ever, ever, ever expressed was that Satvik should light her funeral pyre. And I wasn't there. Granted, today I am in the US um, and I can pursue a life that I want to. I can marry the person of my choice, I can lead a life like any other couple in the US. But my family, my friends, my cousins, my parents, my aging grandparents are all back in India, all back home. And I hope that one day I'll be able to do it.